Welcome back Dragon Age fans to another Preacquisition Law video. This one's going to be about the Kingdom of Ferelden. Ferelden is a nation in southeast of Thedas, best known as the likely birthplace of Andraste and the battleground of the Fifth Blight. It is home to significant communities of Dwarves in Orzammar and Dalish Elves in the Brazilian forest. Let's start by talking about how Ferelden came to be. When the Alamari tribes migrated south in negative 1220 TE, they found a new homeland and called it Ferelden, which means Fertile Valley in their tongue. However, the Fertile Valley did not become a nation for another 2,800 years. As the Alamari settled in Ferelden, some left the tribes. These include the Avars, who live in the mountains and hillsides, the Chastened Wilders, who live in the swamps and forests of the Kakari Wilds, and the Clans, who live in the lowlands. Throughout the years, the Alamari tribes waged war with each other, as well as foreign powers such as the Tevinter Imperium and Ole. During that time, the Alamari developed their own political system, which remains largely intact to this day. Within time, powerful nobles would turn their lands into Banons, then Arlings, and finally Turniers. The nobles would continue the Alamari traditions of infighting and continuing to fight with each other over petty matters in order to gain more power. A few of the most powerful Alamari put forward their bid for kingship over the Alamari, but without success. Then in the exalted age came a man named Kalanhad, who was born to a merchant. Through a series of events he got involved in the war for kingship, during which time he first became a servant for one of the candidates for the throne, when his master decided to use him to gain advantage against other nobles. Kalanhad acted honourably, and through his actions gained respect and command of his armies of his former master. He married his master's noble daughter and became a tournier and a candidate for the throne himself. As he was leading his men, more joined his side, for he was known to be more honourable than other true nobles. Cullen had also gained followers in the circle of Magi as well as Ash warriors. By then the Chantry had become very popular in other lands. Cullen had gained the trust of those among the Alamari who followed the faith as he was said to be a devoted Andrastian himself. In 542 Exalted, a land's mate was called, and Kalanhad made an appearance with his armies. Kalanhad challenged the biggest threat to his rule, the most powerful noble, Simeon, the turn of Denrim. Kalanhad was matched in combat and wounded, but ultimately defeated Simeon. The nobles voted him king, and the fertile valleys became the nation of Ferelden. Kalanhad Therin started the royal family of Therin, who sat on the Ferelden throne for the next three centuries. Now let's briefly talk about the Grey Warden Rebellion and why the Grey Wardens were exiled from Ferelden. In 75 Storm, King Arlen Therin, who earned the reputation of Tyrant, ascended to the throne. Some bands approached Warden Commander Sophia Dryden, who previously held a claim to the throne, to intercede, and she agreed. She violated the Grey Warden's neutrality by gathering allies to rebel against the King. Arlen discovered this plot, and his forces eventually routed Sophia and her followers at Soldier's Peak, where the Wardens held out for a brief time, despite being outnumbered. After their defeating the Grey Wardens at Soldier's Peak, Arlen banished them from Ferelden. The Order would have no presence in Ferelden for another two centuries. Now let's talk about the event that gave a large number of Ferelden's great hatred for all there, the Orlesian Invasion. The nation was invaded by Orle in 824 Blessed and fully conquered 20 years later. For the next 78 years it was under Orlesian occupation. Orlesian noble Megrin was installed as the king of Ferelden during the late years of the occupation and the Therins were forced into hiding while keeping alive the rebellion. Ferelden was saved through the efforts of Marek Therin who was the rightful heir to the throne and a commoner Loghain. Loghain and Rowan defeated two legions of Chevalier to support Megrin at the Battle of Riverdane, forcing Emperor Florian to withdraw all support for Megrin. In 92 Dragon, King Megrin and the remnants of his court fled and barricaded themselves inside Fort Draken. Marek challenged Megrin to a duel and killed him in single combat, ending his rule in the Orlesian occupation. Marek then married Rowan and set to rebuild for Elden. The Fifth Blight possibly Ferelden's darkest hour. In 930 Dragon, the Grey Wardens, who were allowed to return to Ferelden in 910 by Marek, warned that a blight was due to occur in Ferelden 
and gathering the king's army in hope of stopping it in its infancy. But memories of the Orlesian occupation linger in many Ferelden minds, especially Loghain, who opposes inviting the Orlesian forces to aid Ferelden against the Blight. But King Caelan, Marric's son, was determined to put all hatred aside for the sake of fighting the Darkspawn. It was then at the pivotal battle at the ruins of Ostagar when Loghain abandoned Caelan and the Wardens to the Darkspawn. After returning to Denerim, Loghain installed himself as regent and claimed that the Wardens were the ones who abandoned the battle. But having seized the throne so soon after Caelan's death, sparked suspicion among some of the nobles while others swallowed the lies, sparking civil war that threatened to leave the nation vulnerable to the blight. However, two Grey Wardens managed to survive the massacre and worked to recruit an army to fight the Blight, using ancient treaties signed by the groups to aid the Wardens. Eventually, with the aid of Arl Eamon, the Wardens were able to dispose of Loghain and unite Ferelden to stand against the Blight. The Blight soon ended with the death of the Archdemon, Erthamil, sparing Ferelden from the destruction. By 937 Dragon, Ferelden was still recovering from the Blight, and it was at risk of being invaded by Orlea, as Orlesian nobles were looking to recover their lost province. By 930 Dragon, the population of Ferelden had reached 1 million. This population is made up of humans, elves and dwarfs. The most prominent race in Ferelden are the humans, who are descended from the Alamari tribes. They rule most of Ferelden's territories, which include the Coastlands, the Banon and the Hinterlands. The human politics in Ferelden are quite simple. A king or queen leads the monarchy that governs Ferelden from Denrim, the capital. The nation is broken into provinces, called Turniers. A turn or turnier governs each with the exception of Denerim, where the king or queen oversees local affairs along with those affecting the whole of the nation. Arles are the equivalent of mayors who watch over cities and arlings. Ferelden is then divided into banons, which are the countrysides. A ban rules over each such land holding. The current turniers are Guaran and Hyever. The current arlings are Amaranthine, Southreach, Denerim, Redcliffe and the West Hills. Known Banons are the City of Amaranthine, Dragon's Peak, Rain and Sphere, Southern Banon, Waking Sea, West Hills, White River and Winter's Breath. In the west of Ferelden, deep below the Frostback Mountains, lies Orzammar, one of the last great dwarven cities. Orzammar's population is a hundred thousand and each person is assigned a caste. Your caste determines your role in dwarven society and you will inherit your caste from your same-sex parent. For example, if your father was in the smith caste, the son would also be in the smith caste. If a dwarf chooses to leave Orzammar and go to the surface, they become a surface dwarf and lose their caste and their role in dwarven society. The third race to be in Ferelden are elves. There are two types of elves. There are the Dalish elves and the city elves. In 930 Dragon, a clan of Dalish elves can be found in the Brazilian forest which is located to the far east of Ferelden. The Dalish Elves seek to recover, inherit and preserve the knowledge of a sacred treasure of their two fallen elven kingdoms, the Dales and Elvenon. The Dalish are nomads and they are led by a keeper. Many keepers are descendants from the nobility who govern the Dales. The Dalish are considered to have the purest blood from the time of Elvenon. They still revere the elven pantheons and each member of the tribe will tattoo the symbol of their chosen god on their face. There are also city elves who live alongside humans and other races in cities and other major settlements. They live in walled off ghettos and are treated as second class. Now let's talk about the Chantry and its involvement in Ferelden. Andraste was born in Ferelden and was an Alamari. This led many Alamari to be devoted to Andraste and the Maker. As the Andrastian religion grew and spread across all of Thedas, the Chantry is now revered in Ferelden, so much so that there is a Chantry in every town and village. The old ways are disappearing, but the Chantry does not demand their removal or prompt hatred against their old deities. 
the maker simply stands above them. When Ferelde and John, the Andrastian religion, Kinloch Hold, which was once an Avar fortress, was turned into a circle tower. In 930 Dragon, the first enchanter of the tower is Irving, and the knight commander is Gregor. The last thing I'd like to talk about in this video is Ferelden's involvement in Dragon Age Inquisition. So far, we know of five locations in Dragon Age Inquisition that are in Ferelden, three of which have been shown in gameplay demos. The first location I'd like to talk about was shown in the PAX Prime 2013 demo. This area is called Crestwood. It was relatively untouched by the Fifth Blight, and we also know we can establish a keep here. During the demo, Red Templars are attacking Crestwood, and we must make a decision. Do we defend Crestwood Village? Do we defend our keep? Or do we stay with our injured soldiers? The second location was shown off in Gamescom 2014. It's called Fallowmire. The Fallowmire is a swampy area in southern Ferelden. We go to the Fallowmire because some of our Inquisition soldiers have been kidnapped by Avar Barbarians, so they must be in the Avar Fortress. As we make our way towards the fortress, we are attacked by undead, fighting our way through them until we reach the fortress. Once we enter the fortress, we find the Avar leader. He is called the Hand of Karth and addresses us as the Herald of Andraste. Once we have killed the Hand of Karth, we find the key to the cell that is holding our Inquisition soldiers. As we leave the fortress, we find a man called Skywatcher. He is an Avar, but he was not working with the Avar that kidnapped our soldiers. The Skywatcher proposes to join our Inquisition and we accept his proposal. The third gameplay demo was the E3 2014. This gameplay demo is located in Redcliffe, an area that we could go to in Dragon Age Origins. At the end of Dragon Age Origins, Redcliffe was destroyed by Darkspawn, but since then has been rebuilt and is now much bigger. There is also a new Arl, Arl Tegan. During the demo, we go to Redcliffe Castle, which has been taken over by the Venatori. The Venatori are being led by Alexius. Alexius being Dorian's former master. As we enter the castle, we find Liliana, who has been captured and tortured by the Venatori. Once we've saved her, we go after Alexius. After we've killed Alexius, we find an amulet on his body. Dorian must use this amulet to perform some sort of ritual, while Iron Bull, Serra and Liliana protect us from the Venatori that are coming. The last two locations that we know of so far are Therinfall Redoubt, which once served as a Seeker's training facility, but has fallen to disarray in recent years. And the last location is the Chantry Conclave, which is where we attend at the start of Dragon Age Inquisition to discuss the peace treaty between the Mages and the Templars. Unfortunately, the breach happens and kills thousands. That's the end of the video guys, but my question is, what places in Ferelden would you like to revisit for Dragon Age Inquisition? Comment down below and let me know. As always, thanks for watching, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.